Hey, thanks for stopping by. In this episode of my GUI tutorial on Roblox, we're going to be going over text labels. So in my last episode, I made a broad introduction to GUIs and how they work on Roblox, and also a little bit about creating screen GUIs as our container for our GUI objects that we're going to be implementing inside of our games. And with those screen GUI containers, I also added a text label to show text inside of our game for each of the players on their screen. But in this episode, we'll go a little bit deeper into text labels and more about the properties that these text labels and really any of these GUI elements contain. And we'll also throw in a little bit of scripting so that we can see how we can change these properties just like we do with any other instance inside of the game. So how do we create these GUI elements? Well, if you remember from my last episode, we, we create them inside of the folder called starter GUI that's inside of our Explorer. We hit the plus sign and then we first create the container for all of these GUI elements called a screen GUI. So we'll insert that and let's call this uh, main GUI. And then let's hit the plus sign here and let's just search for a text label. So a text label looks like this and on studio, we should be able to see it on our screen. We can click it, we can drag it around and we can even change the size of it just like how we want it to. Uh, we can align it to the center or pretty much just anywhere. It looks pretty boring and basic, but we're about to change that by modifying a bunch of the properties that this text label has and mostly for what a lot of these GUI elements will have. So first things first, we have the background color of this text label, which is by default white. And in order to change it, we go to the right here and we click on this property called background color three. So what we do is we click this little box with uh, the color that it's associated with and Roblox will bring up a panel that lets us select a color for our background color. So this basically takes in three numbers, the red, green, and blue value, and it uses those values to represent a color. And this is important to know when we uh, start changing these colors through scripting rather than uh, using this panel that Roblox has given to us. So let's change this color to orange, let's say. Let's hit OK. And as you can see, the background color of this text label is now orange. And the, the numbers have also changed to fit that color as well. So now if we want to change the transparency of this, of this frame, so we don't want it to be fully opaque because opaque is the opposite of transparent. Transparent basically just means that we'll make it completely invisible and opaque means that we will show it fully. So right now this background is being shown fully, but if we want to change that, uh, we go to this background transparency property, and this is basically a slider that gives a number between zero and one. And the further along we go towards one, the more invisible the background becomes. So if it becomes one, then the background becomes fully invisible. If it's zero, then it's fully opaque. But you notice the text is still showing, uh, even though the frame is becoming invisible. Uh, that's because this is specifically for the background transparency and the way we can do that is changing the transparency of the text, but we will go through that in a little bit. Next thing we can do is add a border to the frame, and we can do that with this property called border size pixel. So this is a number from zero to, I believe 100. So zero means that there is no border, but the bigger number we give it, uh, the bigger the border will be. So if we give it a value of five, then we can see that Roblox has added in a black border inside of this text label. Um, and I think the maximum is 100, which looks like this. It looks really silly, but, but Roblox will allow you to do this. Just letting you know that, because if I set this to 101, it just goes back to 100. But let's just go back to five. We can even change the color of this border by selecting border color three, clicking on the circular color again, and we can pick a different color. So we can pick, let's say, toothpaste, hit OK. And now we can see that the color of the border has changed. So moving along, let's scroll down a little bit. Um, we're not gonna go over the positions or rotations or sizes because th I have more to say about these. Uh, we'll go over this in a future episode when I talk about uh, any of the future GUI elements, but I'm only gonna go over some of the properties for right now. So another property is visible. Um, this basically sets whether you want this text label to show on the player's screen or not. So if I click it, then it'll just completely disappear. 
If I click it again, then it will show up. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And now the next property is Z index. So this basically acts the same way as if we go to screen GUI, this acts as the same property as display order in which if we go back to our text label, Z index essentially tells us which text label should be displayed first in front of the other text labels that belong to the same parent. So if I, let's say had another text label here, both of them are parented to main GUI, the text label with the bigger Z index will show up in front of the other text labels. So let's just right click on text label and let's duplicate it. And we'll also rename these text labels to show some differentiation. So this first one, we will call this text label one, and then we will call this one text label two. And now for text label two, let's just uh, drag this down a little bit to the right as well. And let's also change the background color of this to let's say green. And so to demonstrate this property right now, text label two is in front of the first text label. But if we select the first text label and we change the Z index to a greater number, so let's say two for instance, then the first text label will actually appear in front of the second one. So by default, the Z index is one, but you can increase this number to have a higher priority on which ones will show in front of the other ones. So that's something interesting to know about. And the last category we'll talk about down here is the text category. So you can see this label here. It's kind of hard to read and it's pretty small. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do in order to change that. So first things first is the font. Uh, it, which is just called font face. Uh, if we click this, there is a drop down of all of these different fonts that we can choose from. So let's pick, let's say permanent marker. Uh, we can even change the style of it by making it uh, bold or even italics as well. And we can even change the text itself. So it doesn't have to say label. It can say something else that we wanted to say. Uh, we can do that with this text property. So on the right side, it takes in a string. So if we select it and delete this, we can say something different. Um, how about we say Roblox instead? Uh, you can still see it, but it is a little hard to read. So in order to make it bigger, we can change the text size. So we do that by going over here down to text size and it's right now text size 14, but we can click on this and we can change the slider to make it a bigger number. Like let's say 52 or maybe even something even bigger like 75. Now we can see the text a lot easier. We can even change the color of the text so that it's not black by setting text color three to something else. Like we can make this white instead and then we can hit okay. And now we see that. If we also want to add an outline to the text because it is a little hard to read, then what we can do is we can add in a text stroke. And the way we do that is by going on the right side, there's going to be a property called text stroke transparency. Remember what I said about transparency properties is that it's either a value between zero and one, uh, one being transparent and zero being opaque. So by default, the text stroke is one. What we can do is we can click this and we can slide this down to zero so that we can see that there's a little outline on there. And we can even change the text stroke color if we really wanted to by going to text stroke color three and changing it to some random color like green. So these are just some properties of the text label and gradually over time, the further we go on through this tutorial guide, we're gonna be exposed to all the properties here. The more we work with GUI element inside of this guide. But for right now, these are just some of the properties we can work with. All right, but now let's put this into practice. There's a very common use case for text labels and that is currency. So when you're playing a Roblox game, there's usually going to be a label that shows your coins or any other currency that you have in the game. And it'll show a text with a number on it that changes with your actual currency. And so if you're very new to this, then you can pretty much follow what I do in this episode, because by the end of it, I want you to take away that these things actually have a practical use. And I think it'll be very cool to show what these things can do very early on. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to first delete text label two because we don't need this anymore. And we'll also make modifications to text label one. So first thing we're going to do is rename this. So we're going to right click and rename. We're going to call this currency label. And down here, let's change the font to something a little nicer. Let's make this highway gothic. 
so that the currency will be a little more readable. And now what we'll do, we're first going to create a leaderboard script. And we're going to do that by creating a script inside of server script service. So we will hit the plus sign, script, delete this. And first we're going to make a player added event. So we'll say game dot players dot player added colon connect function. And then in parentheses, we will put the player as an argument. So we're first going to create the leader stats folder by saying local leader stats equals instance dot new. In quotations, we will say int value. We will set the parent of the leader stats to the player. And then we will rename the leader stats folder to simply leader stats in all lowercase. And then, oh, sorry, I made a typo. Uh, instance dot new folder, not in value, because we're going to make that down here with coins. So we're going to say local coins equals instance dot new int value. And we will set the coins parent to leader stats. And then we will set the name of coins to simply coins. So that's our basic leader stats script. So we're done with that. Now what we're going to do is insert a local script. So if we go back into the game, let's insert a local script inside of our main GUI. It's very important that it is a local script that we're using. So hit the plus sign, local script. The first thing we will do is make reference to, to our local player. And what's great about using a local script is that we can access our player with just one line because a local script is designed to be accessed for every single player, which is why I find this to be very convenient. So we will access this player by saying local player equals game dot players dot local player. And it's very important to know that this property can only be used if this is inside of a local script. This cannot be done inside of a normal script because the script doesn't know exactly what player you're talking about. But a local script can tell you exactly what player you're talking about because these local scripts are run on the client side. So essentially, this is taking the current player that's executing the script inside of the players. So it's going to take our player instance. And as you know, from our player, we created a leader stat folder. And inside of that leader stat folder, we created a coins int value. So, so using this chain, we're going to access the coins int value. So in our local script, we're going to drop a line and we're going to first access the leader stats by saying local leader stats equals player colon wait for child, open parentheses, close parentheses, in quotations, leader stats. And then down here, we're going to access the coins by saying local coins equals leader stats, wait for child, coins. So now we've accessed the coins int value. And now we want to make an event that basically triggers whenever the coins int value changes. We will then change the text of this text label right here. So we're first going to make reference to our currency label by saying local currency label equals script dot parent dot currency label. And then we're going to make the event that triggers whenever the coins int value gets changed. And this is done by saying coins dot changed colon connect function, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the text of the currency label. So this text right here, so we're going to say currency label dot text equals, and this new text is going to be the new value of coins. And we fetch this value by saying coins dot value. And so this is pretty much our script right here. If we go into the game, we can actually see this change for ourselves. So if we go into the game, hit test and hit play, what we'll do is that we're going to go to the server side by clicking on current client instead current server. We're going to open up players open up our player and go to leader stats and coins. Let's change this property to 100. Let's go back into the game. And as you can see, the text label has changed its text whenever the coins value changed on the server. And before this just said Roblox, but now it updated the text to whatever this was. So if we go back into the server and change this to 10,000 or 100,000, I don't exactly know what it is, it's 100,000, it updated it just like that. So 
This is one instance of using text labels. I think this will definitely come in handy whenever you have values that need to be updated during the game's runtime. So that's pretty much going to be it for this episode on text labels. There were a bunch of properties that I missed, but that's because most of these GUI elements share the same properties. So like I mentioned, gradually over time, we're going to be exposed to all these different properties and you'll be more competent with actually using these properties and understanding how all of them work. So that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. Join my discord. The link is in the description and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.